Greetings. In uh, part one of the series, we looked at the translator's preface to the original King James Bible, which showed uh, some of the beliefs of the Anglican Church. When you know they provided some clues uh, with regards to the translators of the King James Bible and uh, their proximity proximity to the Catholic faith, uh, we're going to go significantly deeper by looking at one of the works of King James. Uh, we're going to be looking at a work he wrote in 1609. It was actually a letter to another uh, ruler titled, A Premonition to All Most Mighty Monarchs, Kings, Free Princes, and States of Christendom. Uh, the text I'll be quoting, I'll be referencing from a biography of King James titled, James the First by David Matthew. Uh, I'll be looking at pages 186 and 187. So, in, in this work, there was a portion where King James describes himself, and uh, I think uh, many people will find this most interesting. Here's how King James described his own faith. Quote, I am such a Catholic Christian as believeth in the three creeds, that of the Apostles, that of the Council of Nicaea, and that of the Ath Athanasius, the two latter being paraphrases of the former. And I believe them in that sense as the ancient fathers and councils that made them did understand them. To which three creeds all the ministers of England do subscribe at their ordination. And I also acknowledge for Orthodox all those other forms of creeds that either were devised by councils or particular fathers against such particular heresies as most reigned in those times. I reverence and admit the four first general councils as Catholic and Orthodox. And the said four general councils are acknowledged by our acts of Parliament and received for Orthodox by our Church." End quote. Now, this statement in which uh, King James described his own faith is actually quite significant, especially in light of the statement, uh, the questions asked by Tawab Raqqa, in which he seemed to assume that there was no connection between uh, King James and his translators on the one hand and the Catholic Church on the other. Uh, what we see here is that clearly King James saw himself as a Catholic. He rejected the Roman Catholic Church. He rejected the church that was uh, had a communion under the Pope in Rome, but he still considered himself uh, as part of a church which was a continuation of the ancient Catholic Church. He specifically says that he agrees with the first four ecumenical councils, which would be the Council of Nicaea in 325, the Council of Constantinople in 381, the Council of Ephesus in 431, and the Council of Chalcedon in 451. Now, this is significant because the Council of Ephesus, for example, settled the issue, uh, settled the controversy over whether or not it was permissible to call Mary the Mother of God. And uh, to show how significant this is, we can see King James' own thought on uh, regarding the uh, Virgin Mary and here's what he writes in the same work this work titled premonition from uh, 1609 uh, regarding the Virgin Mary he states quote and first for the Blessed Mer Virgin Mary I yield her that which the angel Gabriel pronounced of her and which in her canticle she prophesied of herself that is that she is blessed among women and that all generations shall call her blessed I reverence her as the mother of Christ whom our Savior took his flesh, and so the mother of God, since the divinity and humanity of Christ are inseparable. And I freely confess that she is in glory, both above angels and men, her own son, that is both God and man, only accepted." End quote. In other words, King James himself admitted that he was such a Catholic that he agreed it's permissible to call Mary the mother of God, and that she was above all angels and all men. The only person she wasn't above was her son. That's the only person she was under in the theology of King James himself. That's significant. That's a testament to just how Catholic the Anglicanism of King James and his translators actually were. But it goes deeper still. Uh, we can drive this point home even further by returning to the uh, first edition of the King James Bible from 1611. Uh, it's one thing to show that, you know, that King James considered himself a Catholic and that he considered Mary the mother of God and that him and his translators, uh, you know, had a very high opinion of the Emperor Constantine and uh, opinion similar to that of Eusebius in his writings. Uh, but <laughs> to really drive the point home regarding uh, whether or not the Anglican Church uh, celebrated Easter, we can take a look at some of the opening pages of the first edition of the King James Bible. For example, there was an almanac in the original King James Bible which gave the dates for the Easter and other significant holidays that were approaching. So, for example, here you can see in the top right-hand corner the beginning of the column for Easter and uh, what dates it would appear. The reason this was in the original King James Bible is precisely because the King James and his translators were Anglicans 
and as Anglicans, they celebrated Easter. On, a, on the very next page, they offered a chart which uh, allowed people to engage in certain computations uh, that would enable them to figure out uh, the date for Easter for any year. It's a fairly complicated system, but the point is, is that it allowed people to figure out the date of Easter for decades beyond the time that the King James Bible was published. And again, this was done precisely because they were part of a church that celebrated Easter. And just still more, just a couple of pages after that, they had a uh, system where they would get into what texts of the Bible should be read on certain high holy days. So for example, here we can see the recommendations with regards to what Psalms are supposed to be read on Christmas Day and on Ascension Day and on, and on White Sunday and on Easter Sunday, as you can see in the lower left-hand corner. I mean, it doesn't get any more obvious than this. Obviously, King James and his translators celebrated Easter. That's the reason that Easter appears in the King James Bible. Interestingly enough, while Tawab Braka, whose comments motivated me to make this video series, was apparently unaware of these facts, uh, this can't be said of all UPKers. Uh, now, in, in, this, in this sense, I'd like to take a moment to say something positive about the Great Millstone Group, which is ironic. Uh, in the past, I've had bitter disagreements with uh, the gentlemen of Rebel Alliance Media, yet I've managed to find positive things to say about them. In the past, I've uh, been very critical of the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, yet in certain cases, if I thought one of their videos was beautiful, I would say so in a comment. And uh, this is because I believe in, you know, giving credit where credit is due. So in this case, I'd actually have something positive to say about Great Millstone. And that is that, unlike Tawab Raka, apparently one of the young members in Great Millstone was aware of the facts that have been brought out in this video. One of them, one of the young members of Great Millstone was aware of the fact that in the original edition of the King James Bible, there were signs all over the place that... King James and his translators celebrated Easter. So consider this clip, which is quite interesting. Yep. All right. Yes. Yes. And then the, actually, uh, during King James time, to you know, back up with the elders of sin, they have these little charts in the beginning, showing back back at the time of King James, they had they they like you know they were still going off with the Trinity Sunday. Yep. You see all that right here. This is like. And all you know who started all that? Constantine. Yeah. Yep. Which Constantine was? He was a wicked Negro, right? Was... Okay. In this two-part series, we set out to answer the question, why does the word Easter appear in the King James Bible in uh, Acts 12.4? The simple answer is that Easter appears in the King James Bible because it is a translation performed by the Anglican Church, and the Anglican Church has always kept Easter. There's a lot more to be said about the issue, but that's the basic gist of the answer. Acts 12.4 represents the interpretation of the translator.